While we've all heard of the concept of momentum, how do we apply it to problems in AP Physics 1? In physics, the term momentum essentially describes mass in motion. Denoted usually with the lowercase letter p, the momentum of an object is defined as its mass times its velocity, and is a vector that points in the same direction as the object's velocity. In other words, the more massive and the faster an object is going, the more momentum it has. Objects can gain or lose momentum through external forces, and this change in momentum is called impulse. The equation for impulse, or an object's change in momentum, is equal to the product of force and length of time the force was applied for. This equation also shows us that the magnitude of an applied force can be defined as the rate of change of the object's momentum. With that, we can begin to look at how these quantities interact with objects and each other. To do this, we need to learn about the law of conservation of momentum. This law states that the total linear momentum of any system, or an object or collection of objects, is constant if there are no external forces providing impulses to these objects. Though there is really only one type of question which involves linear momentum in AP Physics 1, collisions. Collisions involve two or more objects coming into contact with each other and transferring either momentum or energy or both and linear momentum will always be conserved in all collision problems in AP Physics 1. While there are countless variations of collision problems, there's really only two types of collisions which you need to solve for, inelastic and elastic. So let's take a look at how to recognize collision type, examples of each type, and how to solve their equations. Inelastic collisions are collisions where momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not due to internal forces like friction. Common examples of inelastic collision involve objects that smash into each other and stick together, or explosions, where one connected object, like a rocket, separates into multiple pieces. To solve these types of problems, the only equation you need to write is the conservation of momentum. For example, let's say we have a block of mass m1 moving to the right with a speed of v1, and it crashes into another block of mass m2 moving to the left at a speed v2, and they stick together after colliding. To write our momentum equation, simply equate the momentums before and after the collision. Remembering that momentum is a vector and taking the rightward direction to be the positive, the total momentum before the collision would be m1 times v1 minus m2 times v2. After, because the two masses stick together, the final momentum will be some variable velocity v final times the sum of the masses m1 plus m2. This is the momentum equation that will apply to all inelastic collisions, whether it be two putty balls smashing together, two football players colliding, or a car crashing into another one, use this conservation of momentum law to solve for whatever quantity is being asked for in the problem. The other type of collision, elastic collision, is a bit trickier because it's a collision where the kinetic energy is conserved on top of momentum. In these cases, we'll need another equation besides the conservation of momentum because the objects don't stick or combine together or split into separate pieces. To solve elastic collision problems, let's look at the same situation as before with our two masses, but assume it's an elastic collision this time. In addition, let's assume that the final velocities of the objects are in these directions, though this assumption of direction will not affect the answer of our question. To write our conservation and momentum equation, let's follow the same process as before, but this time understand the two masses will not combine, thus leaving our final momentum as the sum of sum m1 v1 final and m2 v2 final. In addition to this equation, we can use the fact that the kinetic energies before and after must be the same, but this system of equations can get messy. Instead, a super convenient second equation to use instead of energy conservation is that the relative velocity of the two objects, or the difference in the velocities before and after the collisions, will always swap, which actually can be derived from the original two equations shown. To write this relative velocity equation correctly, find the relative velocity of the initial state and equate it to the opposite or negative of the relative velocity of the final state. For example, let's call the relative velocity to be the velocity of m1 minus the velocity of m2, though the flip version will work just as well. Making sure to consider the direction of the velocity vectors and calling positive to be the right again, we can call the relative velocity before to be v1 minus negative v2, and that must equal the negative of negative v1 minus v2 from our assumed final directions. From there, all you'll need to do is solve the two equations we wrote in a simple system of equations, momentum conservation and relative velocity swap. Though different quantities will be given to you in the question, these two equations will be all you'll need to solve any quantity they could possibly ever ask for. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about momentum, impulse, and the two different types of collisions.